What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. It's been a while. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the RioLink E1 Outdoor PTZ camera in Home Assistant, and how you can actually control the pan, tilt, and zoom movements of this camera in Home Assistant. In the interest of full disclosure, RioLink did send me this product, but they didn't tell me what I should say about it. The E1 Outdoor Camera is a Wi-Fi connected pan tilt zoom camera that has 355 degrees of pan, 50 degrees of tilt, and 3x optical zoom. It also has two-way audio, a siren, and supports up to 256 gigabytes of storage using an SD card. The software allows for person and vehicle detection, and it also allows you to choose the area of the field of view that you want alerts to be triggered in. The camera has a DC power jack and an ethernet port, but it doesn't support PoE. It just allows you to connect directly to your network using an ethernet cable. The name outdoor comes from the fact that it has IP64 rating, which means it can resist water splashing on the enclosure from any direction without penetration. This camera also supports RTSP, real-time streaming protocol. I'm not gonna review image quality in depth in this video because security cameras aren't my forte, but I will show you how to set it up in Home Assistant and how to control most of its features directly inside Home Assistant. As I understand it, this integration method works with both the E1 Zoom and the E1 Pro. Installing the camera is pretty straightforward. If you want to mount it to a vertical surface like a wall, it comes with a mounting bracket. The mounting bracket is mounted to the wall first, and then there's a little clip that you screw onto the bottom of the camera, and then the clip attaches to the bracket. If you're mounting to a horizontal surface, like in my case, where I'm mounting to the underside of my deck, all you need is the clip. You mount the clip to the horizontal surface, and then you just screw the camera up onto the clip. You'll notice that there's a little rubber washer around the threaded stud, and that's to help seal it for outdoor use. After it's mounted, you can plug the camera in. Go ahead and download the app and add the camera into the app, just following the instructions that come with the camera and the instructions that show up on the screen in the app. When adding your camera, be sure to remember the username and password that you set for the camera, because you're gonna need that in Home Assistant, and also go into the device's settings and check the IP address that is assigned by your router to that camera. I recommend setting this IP address as a static IP address on your router before continuing. Also in the app, you can create preset positions for the camera, which we can actually use later on in Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, we wanna add this camera using the RioLink integration. That's a custom integration you can find in the Home Assistant Community Store. Go to Hacks, click the three dots in the upper right corner, click custom repositories, and then paste in the URL of the custom integration. I'll have that URL in the description. Select integration from the drop down, and then click add. Click the integration that appears in the list, click download this repository with hacks, and then click download. Restart Home Assistant, and once it's done, click configuration, devices and services, and then click add integration in the bottom right corner. Search for RioLink and click the RioLink integration. In the host field, enter the IP address that you identified earlier, and then enter the username and password that you set up for the camera in the app. Click Submit, choose an area if you want, and then click Finish. This integration gives you a bunch of cool controls and sensors, as you can see here. Unfortunately, the spotlight switch doesn't seem to work at the time of recording, but you can use a curl command to turn it on still, and I'll leave a link to where I found that in the description. You can activate the siren, the switches to turn on or off recording, recording audio, and also some other different notification methods. The sensors include motion detection, vehicle detection, and person detection. Even though pet detection shows up here in the list, Reeling doesn't say that this camera specifically supports pet detection, and I don't have a pet to test this. In the developer options under services, you can type in RioLink and see that this custom integration gives you a few different services that you can use to control your camera. Specifically, I wanna look at the pan, tilt, zoom control service. There are a bunch of different commands that you can use to control these movements of the camera, and 
All these commands are listed in the custom integrations documentation. So check those out if you wanna know how to use them specifically. It has basic movement commands for up, down, left, right, which make the camera move in the direction specified until a stop command is sent. As far as I know, there's no way in this integration to move the camera a specific number of degrees or for a specific amount of time. It's just go until you send a stop command. However, there are ways to do this, which I'll explain later. To send these commands, choose the camera that you just added as the target and then add the commands as I'm showing here in the service data box. There are diagonal movement commands, zoom commands, and even commands to use the presets that you set up in the Reolink app. To use these presets, use the T-O-P-O-S or to position command, and then put in the preset of 001, 002, or 003, depending on which preset you want the camera to move to. My main focus in this video is the PTZ control and all the real link custom integration is good. It doesn't give you the controls that I would want, namely the ability to move specific amounts. Here's where the OnVIF integration comes in. To add your camera using the OnVIF integration, go to Configuration, Devices and Services, and then click Add Integration in the bottom right corner. Search for OnVIF, and then click the OnVIF integration. Click Submit, and then in the drop down, select Manually Configure OnVIF Device. In the Name field, type the name of the camera, and in the Host field, type the IP address of the camera. For the port, use 8000, and for the username and password, enter the credentials you set up in the Reolink app. Once this is done, you can choose an area and click Finish. Now if you head to Services, you're going to see some new commands for the PTZ movement of the camera. Type OnVIF in the service box and you'll see the OnVIF.PTZ service. There are a lot more options here, but you can see that it gives you the ability to set how far the camera moves or how long it moves. You also have the ability to move to the presets you defined in the app, just like we did with the Reolink integration. This service is better because not only can you do everything that you could do in the real link integration, you also have the ability to move the camera for a specific amount of time or for a specific distance. This is cool because then you can create buttons in Home Assistant in a loveless card that allow you to pan across a specific area by tapping the button. So here is a card that I use to control my real link camera. It has a stream of the camera's feed with PTZ controls overlaid. The overlay also includes buttons for the preset positions. I didn't come up with this card myself. A guy named John Florin on the Home Assistant community is the one who came up with it. So I'm gonna leave a link to his post where he showed how he made it in the description. I think this Lovelace card provides a nice way for you to see your camera's feed and also control it all in a nice little package. And underneath it, you can put an entities card so you can view the status of the different motion sensors as well as the switches like we saw in the real link integration. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys in this video. I hope you guys found this guide helpful and hope it gives you a good idea of the level of control that you have over the pan, tilt, and zoom in Home Assistant. Hopefully in the future, the custom real link integration gets updated a little bit to support these incremental movements rather than just having to send a stop command. And hopefully more and more cameras get added to the list of supported devices. I'll be doing more guides like this as well as product reviews and home assistant how to So if you're interested, please consider subscribing and you definitely not going to want to miss the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.